Welcome everybody to the newest addition to the Centex fleet of machines, the Puget. It's equipped with two RTX 3090s, a terabyte of RAM, and an Intel W3365 32-core 64-thread CPU. My main purpose for this machine is for quadruped slash robot dog reinforcement learning, hence all that RAM for the memory buffer, and of course the 3090s, which I found to be very good for machine learning. This workstation is from a company based out of Washington called Puget, which got its start back in the year 2000 building systems and has been doing that ever since. Before I even had the machine, I was really impressed by the entire process. My experience with Puget started with a phone conversation about what my current needs were, and the result was a build plan for a machine specifically suited for those needs. From here, every step of the machine's build process was meticulously logged, and I was notified about what Puget was doing and had already done online. I'm pretty confident that a company that's built computers for over 20 years can do a good job of it, but I'm also a big believer in checklists when building and planning just about anything, and seeing at least the lists that they share with the customer, it's at least testament in some respect of their professionalism and their kind of mindset and approach to this whole process. So aside from the checklist that you can view online as your machine is built, so they're literally checking off those boxes and uploading them, uploading the, the check marks online that you can see where they are in the actual process, they also run and share a bunch of benchmarks for your machine once it is fully built. Finally, there's an images tab where they have images of the completed machine and even a couple thermal images for idle and load. And then there are images of the bio settings, should I ever get lost and uh, need to revisit my starting settings. Next, I absolutely have to throw some love towards this case. Uh, I had actually never heard of Fractal Design until this point, but the case is made by a company called Fractal Design. The case is specifically the Define 7 XL. I've always built XL sized machines and um, I, I like this case so much that if I build another one, this is almost certainly going to be the case. The case is bu like build quality and just feel is very good, very premium, and it's very, very customizable. Uh, you can do all kinds of stuff with this case. So I can, I can see why Puget uses it. And comically enough, I found videos from over six years ago from Puget, and they were using these fractal design cases, and they really look very similar to to this one, so it's clear that Fractal Design has just been slowly iterating on this design. So it's pretty cool to see the evolution of this, this case over time. Also, even in this, in this video, you can see there's that custom fan mount, and I imagine that's probably built by the same person who designed the custom support bracket for the 3090s in my machine. The RTX 3090 card is a 2.5 slot thick card. It's extremely long. It's very heavy. It's known to put a lot of pressure on your PCIe slots. So it's pretty essential that these cards are supported in some way. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the issues with 3090s that people are having are simply because they're not physically supporting their 3090 cards. So it's really cool to see from Puget this, this sort of custom solution for the, the 3090s in this machine. Getting back to the case and the build, every fan here is a Noctua fan other than the 3090 cards, and you can definitely tell this machine is very quiet, even at full load. Also of note, this case does come with a fan hub, which Puget has not used, so theoretically we could even add more fans here, very simply. On the topic of fans and being quiet, the two sides, top, and front panels all have sound dampening on them. The intake areas at the front and bottom also have removable meshing for easy cleaning. The main intake for air in this build is on the front sides, so to speak, where we have these large vents going top to bottom, and the exhaust is out the back. The obvious question at this point is, does it work? How are the temperatures? The RTX 3090 is a 350 watt TDP card. That's a lot of heat per card, and we've got two of them. I like to do benchmarking with actual workflows that I use, so in this case we have a GPT medium task running with a 2048 training batch size per GPU purely to keep these GPUs working hard. First, we can see the actual wattage as reported by NVIDIA SMI, something like about 310 to 315 watts average for GPU 1, and more like 295 or so for GPU 0. GPU-1 is also driving the display, which could describe most of this difference. Next, we can see the temperatures for the same run, where we have about 65 degrees Celsius for GPU-0 and about 77 degrees Celsius for GPU-1. 
The delta here is mostly described by the physics of heat where warm air rises, so the top GPU is more likely to be sucking in hot air from the GPU below it, plus it's just getting heated up by the GPU below it. Next, let's check out my thermal camera results, first with the casing on. The thermal camera tells me the temperature in white of the thing I'm directly pointing at, then it also shows in red the hottest point in the photo, and in green the coolest. Somewhat comically here, we can see the hottest point in this photo is actually the wall behind the machine. Around the back of the casing, we can see the hottest point here is essentially where the DisplayPort cable plugs in. I never really put much thought into how much heat these cables would be put through over time, but clearly it's a lot if it's on a GPU that isn't just simply an accelerator. Opening up the side panel here, not too much shocking, the GPUs are indeed hot. And you can see just how much hotter that top GPU is. Next, I had been curious for quite some time to see how the RTX 3090 compared to the RTX 8000, and also, of course, to the Big Daddy A100. <laughs> the 3090, being an Ampere architecture, is and should be faster than the RTX 8000, but I also was curious to see how much faster on a real-world type of problem. So, uh, using the exact same benchmark that I used with the A100 and the RTX 8000s, which is, again, just a GPT medium with a 1024 batch size per GPU. So, I do have some multi-GPU examples. I will not be able to compare multi-GPU on this machine because we do not have an NV link. So... Either you want to have one of those SXM boards or you want to have an NVLink uh, if you want to do multi-GPU. So if you want to spread, um, the you know, train the exact same model across multiple GPUs, you definitely want to have the NVLink. I didn't realize how useful the NVLink really was until I actually compared it with these benchmarks. I mean, it makes a huge difference. It's like 100% 100, 100 faster if you have an NVLink, which is pretty cool. So anyways, getting back to this, these are the results. So uh, basically the big thing here is how quickly do we step? So each step is the same on every machine. The question is how many steps per second essentially can we take? So as we can see here, the DGX A100, so that A180 gigabyte card on that DGX station was doing about 14 steps per second. The RTX 8000 does five and the Puget's uh, RTX 3090 is doing 6.8, it looks like. So I went ahead and did the math here uh, to compare to the RTX 8000. So 6.8 minus 5, 1.8, 1 1.8 out of 5 steps. So this means the uh, 3090 is about 36% faster than the RTX 8000, which is... Uh, pretty substantial. So it does suck more power than the RTX 8000, which is somewhat comical, uh, probably about 36% more power. But the main difference here for me is the actual cost of the card. Now, unfortunately, the 3090 is uh, challenging to say the least to get a hold of. Uh, but the actual price that was intended for this card is $1,500. The RTX 8000 is a $5,500 card, <laughs> so the fact that you can spend such a tiny fraction and get a more powerful card is very um, interesting. Uh, and the RTX 8000 does have uh, twice as much VRAM at 48 gigs uh, per card, so we could also compare it to something like the Titan RTX card, which actually is a smidgen faster than the RTX 8000 card. The difference here, I think, is the RTX 8000 is clocked down slightly because it's a server card, um, just taking a guess, uh, because it otherwise has, I believe, the same number of CUDA cores. So anyways, uh, pretty interesting results. It's, again, essentially 36% faster than at least the RTX 8000 or the Titan RTX. Um, they're pretty close, the RTX 8000 and the Titan RTX, but it is the R Titan RTX I've found to be slightly faster. And clearly the A100 is still the massively reigning champion um, at still like basically twice as fast as the RTX 3090 and three times as fast as that RTX 8000. Moving forward, at least for me personally, I'll be continuing to use this machine and these lovely RTX 3090s for reinforcement learning with the Biddle Robot Dogs. So far, the machine's been treating me very well, and I've enjoyed learning more about reinforcement learning with this project. I'll put a link to that series in the description if you've not yet seen it. 
Also, of course, if you're in the market for getting a PC build, definitely check out Puget Systems. I'll put a link to them in the description. Otherwise, you all know the deal. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in another video.